Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Kelly D and I'm Dr. B and we are here to have cocktails, coffee and some convos with you today. Um, so grab your drinks, stay in your PJs, find your most comfortable spot inside or outside, whatever works for you. And today we're going to talk about all things sympathetic overload. So if you know what that yep. is, oh, you know you're in the right spot. If you don't know what that is, I promise you, you're in the right spot, right? Either way, either way. Either way, you're in the right spot because we are <laughs> going to talk about the overload. So um, just to kind of kick us off here, if you don't know what sympathetic and parasympathetic is, sympathetic is that fight, flight, freeze, fawn, like that overwhelm that like everything is in kind of the shock breath holding pattern. There's not really any good flow in your system. It's that, <clears throat> right. And you might not feel like you're holding your breath, but internally there's this like clamping off this constriction, this closure, this overwhelm, if you will. And then parasympathetic is the rest, the digest, the repair. And that's Ultimately, we we want to be able to get into both, but we want to be able to get in and out. <laughs> we don't want to get 100%. stuck in one, right? That's and right. so <laughs> that para really, you know, a lot of a lot of people have difficulty losing weight. Sometimes it's a sympathetic overload that's not allowing them to rest, digest, and repair. Um, it's that go go go, the constant do do do. Like your system never gets to literally chill out, right? And so over the next three episodes, we really just want to talk to you guys about that sympathetic overload. And just really tune in. What is it? What are the different identities we go through within that? Um, and then, you know, really provide you guys with some, just some like at your fingertip tips to help you get out of it um, and hopefully stay out of it knowing that when you're in it, hey, I know what this feels like. And now I can, I can get myself righted or aligned to get myself back into that rest, digest and repair for optimal health and well-being. That's right. So, yeah. 100%. That's where we're going to so, search out. Yeah. So we, so what is funny is that, you know, we didn't want this to be like about our practices or anything, but you know, we have like so much That's knowledge so between the two of us <laughs> that, and we both had uh -huh. a couple clients uh, yeah. this week actually that had brought up this whole mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. kind of structure of yeah. the sympathetic and how we are all in sympathetic overload, especially after COVID, you know, trying mm -hmm. to find our space. And then yeah. like we, we, we provide guidance for our, our clients uh, yep. to maintain um, par parasympathetic responses, which is mm -hmm. what this whole kind of podcast is about so yeah. <clears throat> even though we're not supposed to be talking about work so that's not the purpose of <laughs> our podcast this is I think really important so we're going to share our knowledge and hopefully you will enjoy it well this is important because our whole idea on this podcast is to empower you guys right. um, is to just have the conversations hard easy whatever you want to label them but also empower you and you know I actually gave a lecture um, to a women's leadership group last year fall. And, you know, there was hundreds of people, I can't remember 500 plus. Um, and it was all about sympathetic and parasympathetic, because when we're educated in that regard, and we know, and we can start to learn what it feels like and start to learn kind of the symptomology behind it, then we are tuned in and we can say, oh, this is what they were talking about. And here's some tips they gave me. Let me try some of these toolbox tips and see if I can get myself aligned so that I can show up as a better parent. I can show up better for myself. I can rest and digest and repair when I'm actually sleeping. And, and I feel empowered to do so. Right. And, yeah. you know, Kelly D and I are coming at you because, yeah, we've had these clients this last week. So it kind of seems like the hot topic right now, if you will. But we've been there. Yeah, we have literally been in it <clears throat> and we still get in it. We just recognize it so much quicker and, and can pull ourselves out of that and realign um, whether we do it ourselves or if it's something major. Guess who I'm turning to? I'm calling her. Right. But um, at the end of the day, you know, and then you can bring yourself back out of it, use, utilizing the resources. So exactly. um, so, so it's empowering you. Uh, yeah. But I, you know, I really went through this back. Well, so kind of what triggered this for me recently was I was asked to be an expert um, 
a panel review expert for a gal that's going through her uh, PhD dissertation. And she's got interview questions for a focus group and an interview group. And it, it was all about how athletes who experienced a career ending injury in their college timeframe. So like division one NCAA athletes, how, like how did they describe their transition because it wasn't a planned transition, right? Um, it was career ending. It was this, you know, one minute you're playing and the next minute you can't. And, you know, like Kelly D and I talk about trauma, that's trauma. Trauma doesn't have to be, you know, sexual assault, rape, um, battery. It, it, it can be any, really any hardship. It's an experience that isn't, yeah. let's say a pleasant one or, or um, a desired one, right? So it mm -hmm. could be the loss of loved one. It could be a motor vehicle accident, that changes your trajectory of, or stroke, right? Like one yeah. minute you are physically capable and you're doing the thing and maybe you're, um, oh, I watched Bones. It's this TV show. And one of the doctors, one of the scientists ends up being paralyzed from the waist down. And he's just mad, right? Because like his way of getting through the lab and doing all the things that he does normally prior to the injury was to move and walk and stand and he could reach this thing. And on this shelf was this thing. And then all of a sudden now he's in a wheelchair and now he's having to realign everything. He can't get up the stairs. Now he's got to go the long yeah. way and take the right. He's just mad, right? Like yeah. the whole trajectory of everything that he knew and was doing changed. Mm -hmm. And that happened for me. And so Kelly yeah. D and I got to talking about it, especially with this um, recent expert panel request. And so it was like, yeah, it kind of brought back those memories of the time when um, it happened to me. It's obviously Kelly's gone through some things that, that that idea of your identity in that moment gets shifted. And then what do you do? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. So uh, sort of just commenting on like just tagging on about the trauma response which is what we're talking about mm -hmm. is that it, it could be like you're I'm a student and you have all of these like bills that have to get paid or you mm -hmm. have uh like a lecture you have to do a report you have mm -hmm. like a like in my case where I where I teach we have oral practical exams you've got all that so that's a stressor right and if yeah. you've already been impacted by like low marks or you know, you can't like mm -hmm, you can't eat mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. week because you're a poor student. All those are all trauma responses based on what has occurred. Right. right so it doesn't right. just have to it, it can be like all kinds of things like we had talked about, um, like a partner has passed away or you've mm -hmm. had to claim bankruptcy. Right. You've sustained in injuries from a motor vehicle accident, all that kind of stuff. That's a trauma response that your body's reacting to and creating a pain pattern, mm -hmm. if if you will, also in the physical body, but emotional and mental yeah. as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, we've talked about belief systems. So when that in like so for me it was um I was playing semi professional soccer and I had a career ending injury. Um, we, we didn't know it at that moment, but it ended up being a year on a bone stimulator and then surgery. And it just, it just was never the same. And I never played at that level again, but in that moment, it was like this identity crisis, right? Because it was, I, I didn't have a career yet. So I was Brianne, the soccer player. So now I don't have soccer. And then I happened to be raped like five, six weeks later. And so it was this idea of now I don't know who I am. And now you've just stolen my self-worth all within like a short period of time. And so in that, you know, moment, if you will, like the whole trajectory of everything changed. And so in that sympathetic overload, it's that, am I fighting? Am I flighting? Am I freezing? Like, what am I doing? And do I go through different phases, right? Yep. In that and kind of do. healing and my belief systems and yep. what do I, you know, I just had this career ending injury and then this other trauma happens to me. And so now I'm like, I'm not worth it. I don't deserve abundance. I, you know, my voice doesn't matter. Like all of these belief systems are just like playing over and over and over again. And that's just creating more and more of this overload. Right. Yep. So then, 100%. and then I identified yeah. with the victim role because <clears throat> I wasn't the soccer player anymore, which was my like, 
mind identity, right? And then I wasn't in a career yet because I hadn't gone to, I mean, I had graduated from college, but I hadn't, I wasn't in a career. So I wasn't like Brianne, the accountant or something like that, right? So it was like, how do I identify? Oh, well now I'm a victim. So let me identify as that because my ego wants to identify with something. And so it's going to find what it can to identify with. And so then I was in that victim role and reacted in twice. Sex. Twice, Twice in a matter right? of a short because, time, totally. Yeah, because you were mm-hmm. the victim of the injury and then the victim Touché. of, Touché. of yeah. the rape, right? Yeah. So now you are the you are the victim. victim. That's going to yeah. be your response, right? And the totally. role that that plays. Totally. And then looking back, it's like, okay, I, I was in that victim role. I identified as the victim for probably about eight. If I really had to look back, it's probably about 18 months. Um, and that embodying that role really sent me into this avenue of being living that was nothing I ever would have desired. I don't believe ever had I not been in the victim role. So I made really choices that didn't honor me. Let's Mm -hmm. say it that way. They weren't bad choices, but they just didn't honor me and who I was and where I wanted to be with my life. And then one day I woke up and it was just Mm -hmm. this like, awakening this awareness of like, Ooh, this is not how I want to live. But now I had to climb myself out of the trench, if you will. And that was like the start of the healing journey. And this idea of like figuring out or finding who I am or identifying with that powerful person that I wanted to be the person who wanted to be the doctor, the person who wanted to help others. And here I am not helping anyone and not even myself, (laughs) right? So having to climb out of that to now be living the life that I had always dreamed of and desired. Um, But had I went through those different seasons, right? Yeah. And I mean, like they, like we're talking about like the six F's, right? So that's like um, uh, flight or fright, there's freeze, there's faint, there's fawn. And then the last one is... Freeze, flight, fight. I have to look at it because I had to write it down. Because then you say it 10 times fast and it's a tongue twister. I know. <laughs> yeah. It used to just yeah. be fight, flight, or freeze. But now, you know, they've added because it's trauma response in essence, right? So they've totally. added all these other things are coming up <laughs> yep. as a result yep. because there's different ways in that trauma brain, if you will, there's different way- ways that we react. Like, okay, so let's, let's be, I'll be 1000% laid out here for you guys. So, when you, when you're growing up, let's say they always talk about like, if something bad, like a rape happens to you, here's what, here's the steps you take, right? Like you stop, drop and roll kind of idea, right? Yeah. So you, yeah. you, you, whatever, call 911, you go to the hospital, you get a rape kit done, like all the things, right? Yeah. That's yeah. not actually what happened in that moment. I got drugs in my system from being, um, drugs being slipped into my drink. I'm now in trauma brain. I have no idea where I'm at. I'm in a random place with three guys that I don't know. Maybe they're going to kill me. I have no idea. I just want to get out of there. And then I just feel so dirty. I just want to go home and shower. Right. So the steps that I took following coming out of that, but still being in a heavy trauma cloud, I didn't take the steps that I knew how to take. right? Right. So then... I go into, I'm a failure. Now these men are out there doing it to other people. Like went through this whole cycle. And this is just constant in my system, like this constant overload of just on repeat, right? Like the button just won't stop. It just keeps going. And so I start to believe it. I'm a failure. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the sympathetic mode, right? The overload. That we get trapped in, right? Mm -hmm. And we are in the state of uh, freeze right? Because we're thinking, how am I supposed to react to this, right? And then flight yeah. means you're avoiding the situation, right? Mm-hmm. Or do I become aggressive and like fight everybody because you're That's completely it. defensive, right? That's it, right? And then it comes into a state of where, you know, all of that's gone, gone through. So you're angry or happening and then your body is now trying to digest everything that's happened and you just shut down right Mm -hmm. so creating that kind of um like the fainting process if you Mm -hmm. will right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then of course fawn is being afraid to even like 
move, move forward and take the steps towards where you actually need to be and yeah. where you're fighting to actually yeah. get some like normalcy, if you will, back into your life. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. You know, and looking over your shoulder every five seconds, making sure somebody's not going That's to right. attack you. Um, that yep. creates its own sympathetic overload because yep. you're on in constant alert. Um, you know, I still 20 years later will not sit in a restaurant with my back to, to the main door of the restaurant. Yeah. I've just learned to like, I need to be able to observe the entire restaurant around me. I need to be able to see what everybody's doing. <clears throat> and if you were to ask me, if we sat down at a table and 30 seconds later, you asked me, what do you see? I could describe probably everything, everyone, everything, everyone's wearing, what they're doing, um, who got up when, who perceivably went to the bathroom. If those people seem like they're I, like, I literally have like canvassed the room. And that's just like and me I, now. I don't do it in a, now it's more habitual and it's awareness. It's an uh, alertness yeah. in like a safety way, but it doesn't feel like I have to, to protect myself. So it is much different, but it's still very habitual for me to do that. Yeah. And I bet you have a clear view of where the door is. Absolutely. So you can, so you can flee. Mm -hmm. right and, and know where again, all the exits are right yep. that's right and we all tend to do do that when when we have sustained whatever that the trauma is right yeah, yeah. we just create this environment to help make us feel feel yeah. safe yeah. right yeah. so we need to know that we can escape at any time if that was something that had happened right that mm -hmm. you were like oppressed if you will Whatever that the situation is that created your trauma re response is how you live your life now. And that's still yeah. is laying in that sympathetic environment, right? Mm -hmm. So what we need to do on a, on a conscious level is, is, is allow ourselves to maintain a parasympathetic level, right? right. So we right. don't keep feeling those emotions and have that impact of, uh, of, of, of that trauma that was uh, right. that was sustained. Yeah, like the imprint for me now, it, I always describe it like a whiteboard, you know, when it first happens and you write on the whiteboard, it's like the black ink, you can see like bold black ink, let's say you're writing in black, you know, yeah. across the whiteboard. But now with the inner work and like being able to rewire and repattern and clear and transform and whatever words you want to use, it's like taking a rag and kind of wiping but at the end of the day, if I were to like look at the whiteboard, I probably could still see that there was a word written there. Maybe yeah. I could make it out. Maybe I couldn't. <clears throat> the so streaks are there. Yeah. It's not like it's ever destroyed and completely gone, but it's so light now that yeah. in that moment I'm sitting in the restaurant, I can close my eyes and fully tune in and know that I am safe. But there yeah. is just this level of alertness that allows me to say, I have taken in my environment I inner being feel safe, but now I also feel safe in my environment. Yep. Right. Because I'm aware. Whereas before it would be like out of like fear. Yep. For yeah. sure. Yeah. And, and then now that's it's that out constant. of self empowerment. Right. Right. Yeah. Now and it's it out takes, of self empowerment. And it right? takes time and intention to get there, but it, it's mm -hmm. possible, which is the cool, which is, you know, why we do what we do is to help others to find that inner peace. Yep. AKA that parasympathetic state of just, rest, repair, and digest, um, because then our body is flowing. Right. And then we have, and we're in control. We're in control. That's right. So, um, which is a good feeling. It's a good feeling. hundred percent. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's our, our blurb right now on trauma response and parasympathetic and sympathetic. So stay tuned for the next episode when we're going to talk about um, things that that happen in our everyday day life that actually create the trauma response that creates that element of maintaining sympathetic yeah. which we don't want to be in all the time yeah no absolutely not so stay tuned we'll see you next week you guys and bringing more empowerment to you we love you <laughs> have a great day see ya Bye.